It requires us to be innovative, it requires us to be adaptable, it requires us as a species to come together and find solutions that will be able to benefit all. There's a new sense in the world of a change in cosmology, a change in the understanding that mankind is understanding and beginning to realize that the hurt of one man becomes the hurt of all and the benefit of one man or woman also becomes the benefit of all or the detriment of all. At this moment in time, it becomes so critically important for us to realize that there are broader perspectives to see and to take in in the world. A rise in consciousness can only be accompanied by the ability to empathize with other people's circumstance and situation. This requires us, I believe, to be able to put ourselves in other people's shoes, to feel what they feel, to experience what they experience. Maybe the one universal creator has divided himself and herself into all of us together to experience itself through our eyes of unique perspective. Each of us populating this field of information with our own unique viewpoints made and conditioned by our own conditioning biases. These unique experiences actually feed us all to learn more and gain wisdom. The word philomath means lover of learning. And maybe the universal creator is exactly that, the greatest philomath that ever has been or ever will be, to learn through our eyes of perspective. Now, each of us can take this and through the teachings also of Jesus Christ, we can take this same learning of the golden mean to also apply to our ability to increase our empathy in the world. I believe that today we've got, found ourselves in a situation where the muscle of empathy has become atrophied. We live in a world of not only our own echo chambers of a conditioning bias that are driven in large part by AI and other types of technology that put us into these echo chambers continually, but it is ever increasingly important for us to realize that we have put ourselves into this kind of conditioning bias. And as such, it becomes incumbent upon us as well to expand our perspectives. This is one of the reasons I love geometry because geometry helps us to see new perspectives and viewpoints. And that by seeing new viewpoints and perspectives, we can expand our own perception of what is. If we look at a crime that might take place somewhere in the world, there might be 30 or 50 eyewitnesses to said crime, but each will have a different viewpoint on what exactly took place, which is the point of consternation for many a court system around the world. It's because we don't see the world as it is, but rather we see it as we are. We cannot separate our own observation from our own biases that come into the situation. But this is something that we can also embrace, realizing that we are only one part of a larger whole. I spent my entire life collecting facts, learning facts of wisdom, because I wanted to be able to practice and exercise greater judgment and discernment. What I later realized when I was missing was that each of these facts was merely a facet of perspective. The spelling was not F-A-C-T, but rather F-A-C-E-T. That maybe the only larger truth is the love that underlies it all. That maybe I was only seeing one facet of a larger prism of perception. As we look at how to innovate in this world of dramatic change, where even mankind is probably coming to a circumstance where we're unable to deal with the degree of complexity or even manage the complexity that we now see our world facing. We have rumors of wars and wars undertaking around the world. Isn't it time that we all take a step back and start to think about what it means to be a human being? For the last several hundred years, mankind has actually been more human doing than human being. I believe this is large partly fueled by how we have organized around the world and the globe. We have people who are leading countries and governments that are unable to recognize that their one point of perspective might only be one viewpoint amid a much larger perspective. And I think part of the reason why we find ourselves in this situation is because of the educational system. The educational systems that we have are very much reductionistic in their approaches. 
meaning that we find ourselves in a world of hyper-specialization, a world where we don't understand that there's actually an indelible connection between music and mathematics. We don't understand that art can have a profound impact on how we view mathematics and how actually the language of the universe itself, as Galileo once posited, is actually mathematics, connects all of it. It's no coincidence that the philosophers throughout time and memoriam have actually, in large part, been avid followers of this language called mathematics of the universe. But we forget the divine behind all of it. We want to seek a world of randomness for some reason. That randomness is something to aspire towards. When actually, what we call randomness might actually simply be our inability to perceive the higher wisdom and pattern of a divine source. I believe that everything is pattern. Even though I have created a random number generator that achieves the highest degree of quote unquote randomness that we can possibly achieve mathematically, I believe that what we consider as being random is really just a higher order pattern that requires us to zoom out and see it from a larger perspective and viewpoint. Our inability to zoom out has been the thing that has led us to see things in a very insular and myopic way, which I believe lends more conflict, more enmity between man and also between the genders. We also find ourselves in a world right now where my son, only four years old, is growing up in a very different world and has to deal with the situation of being a male child, which now is becoming a very difficult thing in society, especially a white male child. And I'm not going to minimize in any way, shape, or form the challenges that people have faced throughout you know, hundreds of years and millennia. But it is very important that we take a moment and look at where we are in society and be able to foster situations where children like my son can have a bright future, can also understand what it means to become and grow up as a man. A lot of people talk about the rise of divine feminine, and I'm a big advocate for the divine feminine. I believe divine feminine is the aspect of society that really needs to rise, that for society to rise, the feminine must rise. Women have to basically step into that divine feminine for our men also to rise. I believe it's because men have lost their own way in many ways to know what it is to be a man today. And because men are not strong, women have found themselves in a situation where they're forced to try to find ways to rise in this society, in this construct. But as the two genders work together, divine masculine and divine feminine, both will rise. And we need to have voices freed. The voice of women needs to be freed to be able to express itself entirely. And I believe women have the power to nurture and bring about a whole new world. And with this new world, we'll see dramatic change. That's my hope. Because certainly the circumstance that we find ourselves in today with conflict in the Middle East, with conflict in Ukraine, it's easy to forget our own humanity. That we start to believe that when one has perpetrated an evil act that it must be compensated with another evil act. That somehow that is justified. Well, one of the things we can learn from Jesus Christ himself is the two great commandments. Love your neighbor as yourself, and also to always put aside judgment, lest we be judged with the same judgment that we cast on others. These two things are very simplistic, but they teach us a lot, because the Mosaic Law was put behind us, and it was replaced by the law of the good news, the gospel, love. Love is the highest commandment. We're here, I believe, to learn how to love and how to be loved. I'll repeat that. We are here, I truly believe, to learn how to love and how to be loved. And we find ourselves in a situation that's very challenging in this world. In 1962, John F. Kennedy said, we choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade, not because it's easy, but because it's hard. 
because that goal will serve to organize and measure the very best of our energies and skills because that task is one we are willing to accept, one that we are unwilling to postpone, and one that we intend to win. Mankind has found himself at many times in the situation of impossible odds. How could it achieve? How could we achieve? And what we've learned throughout millennia is that when we work together, even a small group of people can actually move and change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. Nelson Mandela has been a great mentor, not because I met him, but because I read his story with very, very deep attention. And while he was in prison for 27 years, he had one poem that had such an indelible impact on his life that I'd like to share with you. Out of the night that covers me, black is the pit from pole to pole. I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloodied but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade. And yet, the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Each and every one of us has an opportunity to have and leave an indelible mark on this world. The question is, do you know what you want to do with it? Because when you do know what you want to do with it, then you can operate in this world with intention. I encourage the women here, the powerful female leaders, to lead, to be feminine, to nurture this world, be authentic, be who you are. There's no need for us to be someone that we are not. We simply have to remember who we are and why we are here. Thank you very much.